Okay, are you ready? I hope so. Uh, so this will be the last talk for today. Um, let me just, yeah, start the <laughs> the presentation. Uh, so uh, I hope you enjoyed it so far. Uh, this very last talk uh, will be about unit testing. I would like to show you something new, um, but this is basically just something very simple and briefly uh, of something more detailed which will be covered in some event on the .NET Developers Group uh, of Munich in May. The date is not fixed yet, but yeah, that's it. And the project is called TestFX, so it's an open source project that I've been working on for three years now. It's kind of an open source project, I would say. And just as a little disclaimer, uh, this is not part of JetBrains directly. Of course, it integrates with some of the tools, uh, but basically, I think it fits nice in today's evening, and that's because of innovation. Uh, so first, I already heard you at least write tests. Uh, not sure about executing them, but I would like to know uh, who of you uses an unit for writing tests? Okay, like 10, 15, maybe. Uh, MSpec, anybody? All right, I forgot about xunit.net. Okay, it falls into the same category, basically. Um, and I'm also, I would also like to know how many of you think that they can efficiently write tests with their framework? So I know it's kind of a subjective uh, question. But no matter what, in what category you, uh, you belong, I think this uh, will be of interest for you because it shows some, some, something new, some new approach. So Martin Fowler once said about JUnit that never in the field of software development have so many owed so much to so few lines of code. And if we look at the .NET ecosystem, we for sure uh, see nUnit and xUnit.NET as representatives of this xUnit family. And they are quite robust and, and popular, of course, but the idea behind this is already 20 years old. So it started in 1995 uh, with Kent Beck and Erich Gamma. Um, and since then, I think uh, there haven't been so many new approaches that established. And most certainly, we can divide all competitors that, that try to compete uh, into two categories. Uh, the first category uh, are those frameworks that build unit test support from ground up. So they will need to write an execution engine, reshaper support, console runner, and so on. And MSpec is a good example for that. But those frameworks most certainly have a problem that they have like MSpec, for instance, I would like to take this as an example, they have a very fragile reshaper support. So they always need to build for new versions. And recently, they also have uh, frequently changing maintainers. And because of that, it's uh, difficult to fix bugs and merge pull requests. Um, the other category are those frameworks that rely on some other frameworks. So for instance, like NSpec, with an N, like North Pole, in front of it, uh, or xbehave.net, they rely on, on xunit.net. Uh, but also they have a small problem that is that they are limited uh, to the predefined structures. So for instance, like test attributes, uh, so to declare test methods, or at least even, uh, even base classes. And also, of course, in, in sense of representation, uh, presentation. I like to say, uh, for tests and the reshaper runners. So you cannot do something new. And this is a fact that really inhibits why we try to invent some, some new test framework. And we could say, do we have a lack of innovations? And I would say, yes, uh, because either it takes a lot of effort, like in the example of MSpec, or we are restricted by those underlying frameworks. But I would like to like this to change. And this is, of course, something that Testafix should solve. Uh, so what actually is Testafix? It is, first of all, a platform 
basically a framework that allows to build other frameworks, test frameworks. And what it does and provides for other frameworks is that uh, other extensions to Testafix can uh, declare some code and say whether it's an action or an assertion. So very principal things in, in testing. And Testafix itself comes with a console runner already, a reshuffle support, TeamCity support, but it's not an actual framework that an end user would use. But instead, and this is also the original idea uh, behind Testafix, we have spec. So apart from translating into bacon in German, uh, it's, it's spec is an extension to Testafix and it provides a fluent syntax that allows us to write tests more efficiently. So before I come to a live demo, um, I would like to show four influencing facts that uh, we kept in mind while designing this. And if we say we, I'm talking about some other guys that helped while, while the design. And so there are four aspects that influence how we perceive tests. The first thing is conciseness. And conciseness is something uh, like we would like to focus on the important things in tests. And I would like to uh, illustrate this with this example. Uh, it's taken from, from some uh, open source code. And if, especially if you're doing unit testing, you might, um, you might be faced with such uh, situations where you want to instantiate some subject on the test and you need to, um, need to create a lot of fakes uh, in order to test it in isolation. Even with templates, it's not so easy because, um, of course, you can use those templates that will generate the boilerplate code for you, but you still need to read it, and tests are way more often read than written. The second thing I would like to focus on is extensibility. So basically, extensibility is uh, the way how we build new features into an existing framework. And for that, I would like to concentrate on this small example. Anyone here who can guess what's wrong with that? Uh, it's it's uh, <laughs> uh, basically uh, this, this exercise database uh, is just to, to show here comes some code. But it, uh, it has something to do with those attributes being applied on the test method. Anyone? Again? No parameterization, of course, yeah. What else? Maybe the order. Yeah, the order. It's not obvious to, uh, to people coming to an unit, but uh, actually, I think this already is expressed by, by the naming, create DB table and afterwards we want to fill it. But the compiler and reflection doesn't guarantee that those two attributes are returned in the, in the correct order. So sometimes we might, uh, might have our tests succeeding and sometimes not. And that's the problem, we don't have a deterministic order here. Next thing is about flexibility. So basically the ability to band existing features to our own needs. And for this example, I would like to show, it, uh, like to show you some uh, MSpec code. So in MSpec, for everyone who's not familiar with that, um, you can share behaviors, and behaviors are basically uh, an encapsulation of assertions. And you can share those behaviors among other Te tests and tests are expressed using classes in this case. But here's one problem and that is that behaviors cannot really be parameterized. So this uh, static object result uh, is shared blindly and magically be, uh, between those two classes. The behavior is injected using the behaves like uh, type and field. And uh, yeah, there's some magic going on behind the scenes. And you also need to add the protected uh, modifier. And what happens if you rename the field just in one class and forgot about the other? So it, it's really not convenient. 
The last and maybe important, most important thing for today is readability. So uh, readability basically describes how we, how good can we read our code and how well can we get into it after some time. And some people argue that uh, tests can act as living documentation, given we run it, and uh, it helps us identifying bugs more quickly. And this is some piece of code taken from the Ninjak project. And uh, I think it, it looks similar to all of us. But there is one problem, um, or several. <laughs> uh, first of all, naming of te test methods. So we have very long and cryptic test methods, and we don't have spaces, so we need to uh, we need to think, well, is, is that really the start of the word? Uh, we could use underscores, but this is also not very straightforward and convenient. And uh, also it reminds myself at the times when I used text messages with 160 characters. Uh, never mind. Um, also, we have duplication of actions. So, for instance, in both methods, we are testing the deactivate method, and this is still contained a second time in the name of the test. And if we want to rename that method, uh, we are facing inconsistency, probably, because we might forget about renaming the test method itself. So, and also one other thing is language noise. So in those tests, we have a lot of language noise. We have, have this fact attribute void, we have braces everywhere, and, and new lines, and so on. One last example, I have two for readability because it's important for me today, um, are nested context frameworks. So this is probably uh, quite similar to, to MSpec. It's taken from, from Java, but basically similar. And what we have here is some, something that is called context uh, nesting. And uh, we just nest our, our test cases into each other and reuse uh, stuff that was already done outside in our nested uh, tests. But there's another problem, and that's class explosion. So we still write a lot of uh, language noise, boilerplate code, and if we do that, we also might come up with just using shortcuts to co collapse all those classes to navigate between them. And in the presenter on the right side, we also see that it might be quite difficult to find the test case when cleared, which is at the very end. So you have to know it's contained in some other three test cases. Uh, MSpec also introduces another problem with that, uh, and that's staticness, but that's a different story. So I would like to come to a demo. And Yes, maybe this way. So I would like to start with some very, uh, very easy class that we want to test. So you probably all have heard of Fizzbuzz. Fizzbuzz is basically a method uh, in some other way declared here. Uh, a method that will return fizzbuzz for every number or integer uh, that is dividable by 3 and 5, fizz for every by 3, and buzz for 5, and in the other case we return just the number as string. So very basic example. And I also think you probably know how this test would look like in n units. So you just write the action, uh, keep the result, compare it to some other uh, value and that's it. Now I would like to show you very briefly how it would look like in spec. So we have a base class and from all other uh, characteristics it kind of look like, uh, looks like uh, mspec I think because we have the subject attribute where we say which class we are testing but we are also adding the method here. That is uh, for two reasons uh, first is navigation later on, and also presentation in the uh, Reshapa runner. And what we do now is we first start with stating the action that we want to test. And we do it in a very 
in a very generic way. So we don't uh, pass an actual argument here, but instead we introduce a field. So for the first part, we uh, looking at the AAA pattern, arrange, act, assert, we just stated the, the action. And what we do now, and I would uh, like to first start with this test that uh, validates that we return a number as a string. What we do now is we just add this test case to that action. And I think uh, at first sight it looks quite, uh, quite complicated and disorienting. Uh, but w what we have written here is actually uh, on, this, on this line, this uh, relates to the test method name, basically. The next line is basically our arrangement, so the first part of the AAA, followed by our assertion, which is the last part. And just to illustrate what, what happens behind the scene, uh, I would like to set some breakpoints and execute that test. So first we start here, where number is set to 1. If we continue, we jump straight to the action which is declared initially. And right after that, we come to our assertion, where in the result property we can find our 1 that was returned from that action right here. And I think with, with only just a, just a single case, uh, it doesn't really illustrate how, how, how compact this um, test framework is. Uh, I will just add all the other cases. And as you now see, we still haven't repeated our action. So the, the action is really written in a very generic way that we can influence in any of our cases and we can execute that and it's presented to us in our in our test session one other important thing to that is that in the test session uh, we are provided with a very nice overview over all steps that have been taken to execute this test so I think this is really one thing that um, machine specifications misses because all those arrangements are merged into one single established context. It's, it's named like that in AMSpec. And of course we can have multiple uh, arrangements here um, and, and, and assertions. I will just to illustrate, I will returns null, for instance, I will just add another assertion should be null or empty, okay. Just to show you how, how a failing test looks like. And in this case, first the uh, exception is provided and right after, after that, uh, we again have our overview of all steps taken that produced this uh, individual test case. Um, I will leave that for today. Uh, like I said, it's just a teaser. Uh, I, I still want to show you that actually uh, using spec, it was possible to port mspec to it. So without actually using any of the code mspec is currently provided in their repository, um, it's possible, for instance, to execute this little demo test. Basically, it's an integration test for me and uh, we still have the same presentation and that was done with just I think 150 lines of code so basically just uh, um, navigating through the type using reflection gathering all the fields uh, giving them to test fx and saying this is a this is an action this is an, this is an assertion so that's it with the demo. Um, nope. Okay, as a few takeaway points for you. 
Um, what I wanted to show with all those examples is that testing is versatile. So uh, we will probably still not come up with some framework that will solve all of our problems. And I think also Hardy did some talk about that. It's called the silver bullet syndrome, I think. Uh, it's very nice to, to view. Um, another thing is that tests FX as a platform allows rapid prototyping for people trying to invent some new test framework. Spec, on the other hand, is a promising new approach, I would say. Uh, I really could, could only show you just, uh, just some basic principles of it, and, uh, but it has a lot of more, so you don't need to create fakes anymore. The uh, subject on the test is created automatically for you. You can uh, inject code like everywhere, even between everything that is seen uh, in the test, uh, so it's pretty exten extensible. Uh, MSpec was able to be ported using that framework. And also, I have to say that uh, Reshapa offers a really great API, a really great SDK um, to invent something new. Um, maybe if you're working in a company and you have some internal framework, it might be worth to look into that SDK because you can probably uh, deliver first class support for some of your uh, framework functionality and it's really great to use. So I think that's it uh, for today. You have the uh, links to all the relevant pages and, and Twitter accounts and so on. Uh, for anyone who's not able to uh, join the um, .NET developer group in May, uh, I think there will be a blog post about that, so you can uh, follow me on Twitter. And are there still any questions? Yes. <coughs> yeah, regarding this example. Uh, Which example? Uh, with the um, end unit test that you showed. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just curious because uh, I would implement it with test cases and then get rid of the duplication. Yeah, that's, that's right. Uh, in this M spec, you have this duplication with this. I mean, in, in your tests, you have. Um, where was it? You mean this one? It's kind of a duplicate. Yeah. You know, uh, I want to be simple as I can uh, in this demo, uh, but also need uh, to show some of the basic ideas. So, uh, spec itself already supports parameterized tests, and of course, we would do that in in N unit also using using test case values. Of course, um, this is just for illustration. So, but I think you can see um, if you have a test, uh, if you have a method that you want to test, and especially in unit testing, uh, you may have quite a lot of test cases. And I've seen many projects following this principle with starting with the method that they want to test, underscore, and then a, a very uh, short, br brief uh, description of what the test does. And uh, this should be just some illustration. So if, if you're interested, you can come to the, to the more detailed talk. Um, yeah, question answered? Yeah. More or less. <laughs> okay, any other questions? Yes? Uh, you quite efficiently can get rid of uh, language noise, but I think you added quite a of, um, string noise uh, with, the, with the assertions. Yep. You can actually say what you're doing right after the... Yes, uh, so I can tell you uh, this... Uh, is that uh, uh, kind of optional? This is optional, yes. It's still something that falls into the category I want to be simple right here. Uh, you can also write that, uh, in this case, that it returns one, and we get rid of those two lines. And you can also omit what have I done? You can also omit the description right here. So my decision that I made was that arrangements can be unnamed, whereas assertions should always be named. That's kind of kind of an inherent idea from MSpec, because in MSpec you basically do the same. And it's, it's, give, it's given into your hand whether you want to actually name an arrangement or not. And 
it returns on this side is uh, basically also just a way to extension the existing framework. I can uh, show you maybe that in all those uh, it calls, it invocations, you have a lot of data. You have, you will have the subject instance itself. You will have the exception that might be caught from, from the action. So you, uh, you also don't need to change the action right here if it throws an exception, it's done for you. Um, results are catched, of course. Uh, sequences falls into the category of parameterized test, row tests. And variables are kind of a workaround, I would say, for local variables. So uh, I would extremely advise against having variables right here declared in the, in the constructor. Because everything you see right here is uh, executed lazily. So it uh, spec and also test of X just accumulates uh, various actions that should later be on uh, executed using a runner. Any other questions? You yes. No more phase. Yes. Uh, you have to. <laughs> Uh, but they integrate uh, into that approach. So I will show you very briefly, and this is uh, taken from some of the, uh, well, maybe a little bit too big. This is taken from uh, some of the integration tests. Uh, what happens here is that our domain type uh, depends on some interface I format provider. And everything we do right here is we say, that uh, we de declare the field with the same name as the con uh, constructor uh, argument right here and with the same type. And we just say it's faked. Uh, there is some class that is called fake it easy extension which will do the work for us. Uh, it injects the action into our test and uh, using this way uh, the format providers uh, is set to an fake, to an actual fake. And we also see this in our operations list. So here's a reset, reset instance fields is also something very interesting, but I cannot talk about it right now. <laughs> and we see that uh, here at the second step, a fake was created, at least one create fakes. Uh, every, one, every fakes uh, will be merged into one operation. And right after that, the subject is created and then we again have our arrangements and assertions. Yeah, this is. Again, sorry. There should be some kind of mechanism that I can parameterize the site. Uh, what do you want to parameterize? Well, at some point, like imagine you wanna, you have an added interface that is abused by a function that calls it with three three different times and three three different n types of entities. Uh, you mean the fake is created with different arguments? Yeah. You, you can do that. Uh, you would just, uh, you would still use fake it easy, of course. Uh, I mean, in this case, uh, this provider is, is from fake it easy. And you just have the usual way how you, uh, how you assert on that. Yeah, yeah. But creation is done for you. And also some, something other that I can show briefly, uh, because uh, I also wanted to optimize for the, for the most simple uh, way. And that is, for instance, if you say you have one mock, it only has one, one method. In this case, it's, uh, I think, get service should, should be used for that. And you can say on some other field that is, it is returned from that fake. So this is just uh, a little idea uh, which can be implemented using, using the framework. And it's possible to, to order all of those actions. Uh, you have very, very high degree of cu cu customization. And yeah, anything else? If you like, I can also show you something about assertions. So for assertions, uh, there are quite a lot of extension methods that go
go like it throws and you give it the type, the message and so on. And yeah, basically also just an, uh, just an extension. And what I also want to point out, if you have time, <laughs> uh, is that we are very context aware in any of those lines. Um, so I think it can be 10%. I have to hurry. Uh, what we can see here is we have the domain type declared as a generic parameter. And uh, this thing is basically just for, for illustration, but we can completely remove that, I think, I hope. Nope, we cannot. Uh, but what it can achieve is that this domain type is created using the fakes automatically, of course. And uh, as I said, we have the subject under test declared as generic parameter. And in each line, we have a type that actually has four generic parameters. And uh, as you see, the first is the actual domain type. The second is the, is the type of the uh, return value from, from the actual action that we have right here. So for instance, if I say domain type uh, to, str to string, then the second parameter will be a string. And we are context aware in like an, any place. And this allows us to also provide extension methods that are quite specific. So we could end up with an extension method that is based on any stream. And it will be shown right here. Uh, we could say it reads until the end or something like that. And it would be shown right here uh, using IntelliSense. And not for any other, um, not for any other types, of course. Any other question? Yes. Uh, you mean on other languages in this other case? Yeah. Uh, I had some plans, I actually, yes. Uh, but I think, um, you know, I kept this quite a secret for a very long time, actually. And uh, I wanted it to be like, I wanted to experiment with it in quite a lot of ways uh, and see if it fits. Uh, uh, if I, uh, <laughs> how can I say? Um, my my goal was to solve every problem. Of course, that's uh, that's what every developer one wants to do. Um, but. Uh, yeah, I think now it's some time to it's time to give it to people maybe so that they can try it. It is uh, used already in one open source project, but uh, just done by a friend of mine. And uh, yeah, I think it's if if the host language allows that, it's possible to port it to any other language, of course. So one point I'm asking is because uh, we actually have a large uh, test of code base, uh, which we compile into another language. Mm -hmm. And also bring the tests over uh, uh, where the similarity between the ambient and the tray unit really helps uh, in yeah. reinventing the wheel on the other side. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's, uh, yeah. Uh, and the other question is uh, most of the testing frameworks actually went away from using base classes in their test uh, classes. Uh, uh, um, you can use them again. Uh, but the question is why do they went away from having base classes? Because in all the code bases that I have seen, you, um, you will end up with a base class that provides some functionality that you frequently need for your test, uh, test methods. And so I haven't seen any good reason for not having them. Instead, right here, they offer a great uh, opportunity to, to write tests in a different way. I know this argument, Yes, but uh, for me, it has never been an issue having a base class. 
If, if you need to add functionality, you introduce a new one. Uh, and that's it. Mm -hmm. so I asked, uh, because any unit player unit went towards uh, annotations and attributes uh, instead of base classes to annotate Yeah, but you know, uh, it really breaks some, some limitations in that sense. So, so <laughs> uh, it really breaks some limitations because uh, some things that I couldn't talk about, but I want to do it briefly. Uh, attributes are also some some source of evil if you want to do uh, crazy things with them. So, for instance, uh, the test cases that we've been talking about, you're not able to pass some complex objects using them. Of course, you can use uh, test. Te uh, I wanted to talk about test case values, and the other thing is test case source. Test case sources allow that, but. Uh, this is some kind of arrangement, and you put this away from your test. And uh, I think this is, uh, yeah, brings some kind of indirection to our tests. Of course, uh, you can always work around those problems, uh, but like I said, there haven't been so much uh, new things, and this is something that I really want, wanted to try. Any other questions? Uh, speaking about the space classes. Have like test base without, which is non-generic class. Um, like I said, uh, some of that code are integration tests. So uh, this is just ac actually this is just. Uh, I'll put it this way: if you have test base with, which is non-generic and test base which is generic, and you want to have a base class which implements some stuff, then uh, this is a problem because you need to write it twice or make some. Um, Yeah, but you know, uh, those, those methods like it returns and, and so on. And this should be the only uh, way to extend some tests. Uh, they can be written using extension methods. And from what I considered to be a problem, I don't think you really need a base class, another. Yeah. But time will tell. And, uh, and like I said, there is no silver bullet. Um, yeah. In the name of, of all speakers for today, I would like to thank you. I hope you enjoyed it. And yeah, have a good evening. <laughs>